the Lorax by Dr. Zeus. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing excepting old crows is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass some people say if you look deep enough you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why is it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, the old Wunstler still lives there. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the Wunstler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkim on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkim cold under the roof where he makes his own clothes out of Miff Mufford Moof. And, and on, on special, special dank, dank midnights. midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks, and tells how the lorx was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents in a nail, and the shell of a great-great-great-grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count, to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snow, his secret strange hole in his grooveless glove. glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper of a phone, for the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. Slump. Down slumps the whisper of a phone to your ear, and the old Wunstler's whispers are not very clear. Since they have to come down through a snuggly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green, and the pond was still wet, and the clouds were still clean, and the song of the Swami swans, swans rang out, out in space. space. One morning I came to this glorious place, and I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown barbalutes frisking about in their barbalute suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the rippleless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees, all my life I'd been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy, joy in my, my heart. heart. I, I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all I had built a small shop, then I chopped down a truffella tree with one chop, and with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed I took the soft tuft and I needed a need. The instant I'd finished I heard a gazump, I looked, I saw something pop out of the stump. Of the tree I'd chopped down it was sort of a man, describe him, that's hard, I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy. And he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he yeah, shouted and puffed. puffed. What's, What's that, that thing, thing you've made out of my truffle tuft? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a need. A needs I find something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that full need. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong, for just at that moment, a chap came along, and he thought that the need I had knitted was great. 
He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorex, you poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorex, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all, built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts, and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to the North Niche, turn left at Weehawken, sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting the needs just as busy as bees to the sound of the chopping of truffle trees. Then, oh baby oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super ax hatcher, which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making needs four times as fast as before, and that thorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the thorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbalutes who played in the shade in their barbalute suits and happily lived eating truffle of fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle of fruit to go round. And my poor barbalutes are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll, They'll have, to, have find to find food, and I, hope and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm. I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads of the needs I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs. I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more cripes. I am the Lorax. He coughed, he whiffed, he sneezed, and he snuffled, he snarled, and he sniffed. Wunzler, he cried with a crifulous croak. Wunzler, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swami swams. Why, they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so, said the Lorax, <coughs> please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape the smog you've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about the gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop, making gluppity glup, as schloppity schlop, and what do you do with this, this leftover goo? I'll show, I'll show you, you, you dirty old one man you. You're glump, glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off, or their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary. In search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, and say, bad, 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 bad. 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 Well, well, I have my right, I, sir, and I, I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more truffle of trees into the needs, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack, an ax of a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle, a tree of them all. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. 
So in no time, my uncles and aunts, every one, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke-smuggered stars. Now all that was left, meet the bad-smelling sky, was my big empty, empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, nothing. just, gave, just me gave me a glance. Just gave me a glance. Just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of, his, of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here is this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years, while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the once lure, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the Wunzler. He lets something fall. It's a truffalo seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffalo seeds, and truffalo trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffalo. Treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest. Protect it from the axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back.